mais novo que você me contou. Isso ali foi difícil. secret agenda. There is no target of individuals. We are all in this together and at the end of the day we will still be together trying to grow the city and helping each of its citizens. Overall the investigative report without seeing out details and the conversations on social media and area news reports show a deep divide and a mistrust among all of us. And as the famous saying goes, a house divided cannot stand. That's why I proposed a contract with Rocky Mount and why I proposed this meeting today. I have two other items that I'd just like to mention. One, I um, I reported that Chris Miller was not planning to attend the meeting last week, and that's not right. I would apologize. Uh, second of all, I've had conversations with the State Auditor Beth Wood, uh, who is available via Zoom if we have any questions for her relevant to the audit, uh, relevant to uh, any other item on the agenda, well, not on the agenda, but anything re related to the audit that we would like to ask. Um, so if we can't get her on Zoom, we can certainly call her at her office. And this time, what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask city manager if she would just give us a report about planning correction uh, that we submitted to uh, the state and um, go from there. Thank you, sir, for um, seeing me my place. For finding uh, number one, um, which stated from the um, auditor's office that multiple city officials prevented the Business Services Center from attempting to collect $47,704 in utility bills owed by a city council member. The actions that have um, taken place uh, since the release have been uh, several. First and foremost, which I have shared with council at least two previous times that I have um, established a new department. It's called Business and Collection Services. Uh, this was formerly a division under the finance department, but it is now a freestanding department that reports directly to me with oversight um, as well from the internal uh, auditor for the city. Uh, this has been in place now for uh, two weeks. I have named the interim director, uh, Latasha Hall, and uh, the team of us, Latasha, Amy, uh, Paula, and myself have been discussing the uh, preparation of a RFQ that will go out. We have developed uh, the scope of work for that RFQ and it's basically just to um, make sure that our workflow processes, all of our checks and balances, all of our policies 
regarding um, collections uh, are in place. So we expect to send that out perhaps sometimes uh, this, this week. So that's the report that I have for you currently uh, regarding uh, item number one. Item number two dealt with um, multiple downtown development management failed to follow program guidelines resulting in $32,452 of uncollected loans and $28,000 of improperly awarded funds. Uh, where we are there is um, I have hired a new community and business development director that reports directly to uh, an assistant city manager. Oversight for the loan programs are vested in the director and the assistant city manager. The centralization of collection and accountability for all loan collections will include oversight of the business services director, the finance director, the internal auditor and the city manager through monthly compliance reporting. So um, I do know that both the uh, community and business development director as well as her staff and the assistant city manager are now reviewing all of their loan processes to make sure that we are in compliance. Number three, finding the engineering division's non-compliance with the city's code of ordinance could cost the city $31,000. Um, well, this is a uh, action whereby the city will amend our code of ordinances to specify that the time period for subdivision guarantees may be extended beyond the initial two-year period. Sometimes in a development process, it does require to go beyond um, the initial two-year period. The city has already put in place enhanced procedures to improve tracking of letters of credit to ensure they are either renewed or called prior to expiration if the improvements have not been completed. Number four, the city manager failed to comply with the city's travel policy resulting in $1,575 in unallowable travel expenses. Most of the $1,575 was related to dinners purchased by the city manager for the city council and staff at two conferences. The National League of Cities in Charlotte for an amount of $858.62 in November 2017, and the Electric Cities Conference in Asheville in the amount of $557.50 in August 2018. As for the balance, the city manager presented documentation to the finance director that additional meal expenses were required as a reasonable accommodation for a medical condition that had been established and placed in the records of the city's occupational health office in 2018. Uh, the city manager believed that she was granted a medical exception because the finance director did not direct her to do anything different. The travel policy will be amended to provide for reimbursement of additional and reasonable travel expenses incurred by an employee on official city business and determined to be necessary as a reasonable accommodation by the city's ADA coordinator. And I do have some additional information that the city uh, staff has been researching and uh, will most likely be amendments to the travel policy which uh, when presented to me, I will review and offer my comments and then finally my approval. But here's some of the things that um, I have also suggested and they have um, found is happening in other jurisdictions, that we will use the current GSA, General Services Administration, per diem basis for meals for current year. And 
we will have a policy to read so that our rates change as the GSA changes. Currently, the city's per diem is $40 per day. GSA is currently $50 per day. We would add $5 a day for incidentals, which would be in accordance with GSA. We will pay 75% of GSA for day of departure and day of return. Compared with our current policy of time, employees departed and returned home. It's much easier all around. GSA rates will be automatically used depending on town or city employees traveling to. Employees would not need city manager's approval to use GSA rates. We will add a section in the policy for employees with special dietary needs. Any travel being charged to a grant will require pre-approval to be charged to the grant and is subject to further restrictions imposed by the grant requirements. Travel expense can be approved at the department head level for subordinates if they have funds available in their budget. We will change the reimbursement forms to reduce some of the paperwork and still be considered an accountable plan. If the council wants something different for council members, a separate policy needs to be written. If they don't have a policy, they fall back on the travel policy that we have in writing. In this case, the per diem, per diem rate would apply uh, to the council as well. And um, we also need to take a look at the P card and credit card policies to see if they all align. Number five, the city did not designate an American with Disabilities Act coordinator as required by federal law. The city agrees that it should designate at least one employee as an ADA coordinator. And uh, actually I have appointed two ADA co-coordinators and I have made their names, office addresses and telephone numbers available to all interested parties and it will be so reflected in their uh, job description. The two coordinators or co-coordinators are Mike Bond, who is our property management uh, manager, as well as uh, Archie Jones, who is the director of human relations. So that concludes my update for uh, our responses and our actions to date regarding the investigative report. Thank you, Madam Manager, for the work and for reporting that. Um, the City Council has the exclusive authority to manage the affairs of the city and to manage the affairs of each, each individual. And so I just want to go through the items one through five and see, of offer for discussion, um, if anything addition, if anything needs to be done or if we feel like we are comfortable where we are. And so, um, yeah, I guess we'll just start with item number one. Sir, any discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, we, we are we are going through each item on the report, and we have submitted to the state a plan of correction for each one of the activities that the state auditor has indicated. And now we're going back to see if we're satisfied with those responses or if there's anything else that we feel like the city council needs to address or deal with. And so I acknowledge Councilman Daltridge. Thank you, Mayor. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of rhetoric going around. Part of the rhetoric that's been going around includes from uh, State Representative Shelley Willingham and uh, Councilman Knight. And I would like to um, add to what we have here, according to State Auditor Beth Wood, we as a city council have the right to see the utilities and the right offs and who they pertain to. And it's been mentioned that we should look at the past 20 or 21 years of uh, right offs. And I don't know how far back we can go, but I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think we should do a complete audit of every right off that we've had for our utilities for as long as we can go back and see if there's any. Um, pattern or anything of, of nature like that 
And then I think we also need to probably explore looking at in detail the um, what we require or, or not what we require. I guess I guess what our policy is policy is for write-offs. And I think the city council should have uh, some say so in that. So I, I wholeheartedly agree with Representative Willingham and Councilman Knight as it applies to um, the audit of the past 20 or 21 years of our write offs for utilities. And I would hope that my council members, fellow council members, would support me in that. Um, and, I, and I also would like to have insight and knowledge of what we can do or what I, what we are, what's required or not required if, if we have access to seeing who the write offs are, are attributed to. So we need to review this policy. Thank you. And, and I guess I, I've heard figures as much as 20 and $21 million in write-offs over the past 20 or 21 years. And I would like clarification on that as well. Is that a motion? <laughs> There's just an observation. I'm sorry. Uh, happy to make a motion. Make a motion. Make a motion that we go through a complete all of, of our write-offs for utilities for the past, as far as we can go back, 20 or 21 years, and also review our policy and, and um, have additional discussion regarding the write-offs. Sure. That's a motion. Second. Second by Councilman Bullock. Any speak for discussion on that? Implication. I have greatly resented the implication in the media that all of us who've been on council for a while had to have known. And all of this has been considered confidential information. In fact, if you call down there and ask about your own record and you told us, I believe you have to come in and show proof of who you are before they release any information. I have no problem with releasing all of my information that's available. Appreciate it, are you? Um, although I understand Councilman Daughters and Councilman Miller's concerns, I don't think we need to uh, take steps backwards and going back over, I think Councilman Daughters said, as far as we can remember, uh, I think we need to, uh, as we've already done, we have our audit uh, findings, we've made our suggestions for the current audit, and we make sure that we make our corrections moving forward from this point forward. But I don't think it. I don't think it would be beneficial uh, for the city as a whole if we were to go back, uh, as we we're saying, and pull uh, historical documents of as far back as we can. I have a question. Yes, sir, uh, Councilman. Mike. Or city manager or attorney. Um, also, Miller uh, mentioned about the privacy of um, one's account holders' uh, information. And we need to be clear um, if, if that can, uh, if we can do that legally. Um, also, we need to be clear, and the citizens of Rocky Mountain need to be clear, what is the process of write-offs? Who approves write-offs? Because to my knowledge, this council have never approved any write-offs. And to my knowledge, no city managers approves write-offs. And my understanding that it's the finance director that approved approve all um, write-offs. And I also understand uh, that uh, the city of Rocky Mount um, we write off at least a million dollars a year, in some years two million of industry, uh, private sector, and um, citizens in this town. And that's probably tens of thousands of names. Um, so we look from 1999 to 2020 or 2019, we have over 21 million, probably more than that, of write-offs. But to my knowledge, and I yield to Councilmember Blackwell or Miller or W.B. Bullock, uh, we never have ever, ever, never seen any write-offs, any names that this council or any other council, uh, to my knowledge, have ever approved. So I would, I would rather um, before voting on a motion that we understand what we can and what we cannot do legally 
because if it's private information such as health care records according to the HIPAA law we don't want to violate any person's uh, uh, civil rights human rights and I hope that we'll be in accordance with what the law is thank you do you have a response for that Jeff or is that something to do? yes sir uh, utility records are not public records but they can be released uh, upon a, a vote of the council if the council determines that it's necessary to effectively operate the city. Utility records are different from HIPAA records. HIPAA records are not uh, public records either, and but they cannot be released. So they don't. They fall in. They fall in a different category, even though they're both not public records. But this would be, I believe, if the city wants to get in there and review the records, would be a proper purpose for review. Is there any additional discussion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Councilor Blackman. I have comments to make as well. Um, I believe the comments that Councilman Dodgers call rhetoric. Interesting that you only select two people. You make comments, <laughs> rhetoric. Uh, Senator Horner made very offensive, racist comments. That's rhetoric. Calling a sitting elected official a pea-headed fool from a sitting North Carolina state senator. That's rhetoric. Um, I'm also a little dismayed about um, the tone of all of the discussion. I believe when Council Member Knight and when Mr. Willingham alleged that they were singled out, it wasn't the fact that write-offs were occurred, it's just that one person was identified as being egregious in the write-offs. So I think that there is a confusion um, about what the real issue is. A write-off, from my understanding, is an accounting and administrative process that is followed by accounting and administrative personnel in response to whatever the policy states is uh, debt that is able to be collected or um, moved upon in some form of action. And if the council wants to review the process of write-offs, then I have no issue reviewing the process. But from throughout the auditor's findings and recommendations, and the thing that I've heard expressed um, from discussions in public sectors, both by the auditor's office and by um, members in the community of the council. The issue, perhaps, is that council, or the allegations, or that council were engaged in improper uh, processes which have not been proven. They were alleged. So the question that I have is, are we moving backwards in giving staff specific direction about individual accounts or is our role to set the policy and a system of accountability as it relates to a system of accountability relates to um, all of our auditing processes and how we write off debt. So I don't think it's um, wrong, it's not illegal, and it's not improper to use an accounting tool to clean up debt that's not collectible and have it represented on your balance sheet. That's an accounting standard. That's not something that Rocky Mount does. It's something that everybody does in private business, in nonprofit business, and in governmental business. And what I don't see is a need to politicize write-offs and write-off policies and write off individuals unless someone can prove that individuals 
use their positions to ensure that write-offs are occurring. And to my knowledge, the findings in the auditor's report cannot substantiate that of any sitting council member or past council member. I do not support showing everybody whose debt is written off. What I also do not support <laughs> is targeting individuals and creating outrage behind something that is an accounting standard. That's my perspective. Thank you. I have a motion on the floor, seconded. Uh, is there any additional discussion? I think clarification needs to be uh, clarification needs to be ma made when it when I when I say make this open this up to council. I didn't say to the public. I said to council to review. And I think the implication was it was implied that um, the auditor was going through and, and singling out one individual. And it's my understanding, based off of these accounts, that it was looked at um, multiple, I, I would assume, every council person, current and past, uh, although we do not know that. So what, I, what my intent is, is to clear the air and to see if there are any patterns going on and not to make this public. But we also, and I agree, we need to, we need to know what the policy is and we need to review that policy. And I think it's even been implied, and, and I don't necessarily get, disagree with it. Yes, it's an accounting procedure to, to do write-offs. And you are correct, it's nonprofits, governments, and for-profit entities. But I do think as the governing body, as the city council, we, we review property taxes adjustments. I think we should do the same with this as well as a whole. And we also, if nothing else, uh, just look for... Um, just look for patterns. Councilman Joyner. Yes, I think the city manager uh, in the response did give some guidelines of how we will do things different going forward with the, these, uh, the utility process. And uh, if we need to hear that again, uh, that we do have a policy now going forward. I have a motion for one other comment. I, I do want to mention that um, recently we have had uh, information um, which have been discussed in closed session, um, somehow being discussed in the media and leaks and uh, individual names that are called. And, and I lean over to our attorney uh, whenever we discuss something in closed session. Um, that's exactly what it's supposed to be. And I think that uh, uh, some of us have violated uh, what we discussed in closed session and have made it public. And it's not uh, within, uh, I would say, uh, how council members are supposed to act and respond uh, under scrutiny of the public. Can I have a motion on the floor? It's been seconded. Is there a need to uh, you call Auditor Wood to weigh in on this, or do we want to vote on this? Okay. Uh, well, the attorney said that we could, in fact, see utility statements. Right, and probably the, 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 the governing board, the governing body, can look at utilities. That's well, I, I think the question was in the closed session, but the stuff that's discussed in closed session should not be discussed by anybody. It breaks the privilege of confidentiality if it's discussed outside of a closed session. It should not be done. And in that vein, I'm sorry. And Please let me recognize you. <laughs> yes, I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad. In that vein, I would say to our uh, mayor, this presiding today uh, that you have violated what uh, we have taught in closed session and uh, to me uh, that's another issue that we need to deal with and we don't need to take it lightly thank you okay we'll have that
that to the agenda. So I have a motion on the floor. I have a second. It is something that is possible. And so I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. Yeah, the restated motion, as I understand it, is that city council go and look back for 20 years to look for emerging patterns and or write-offs and or um, anything that uh, may um, uh, show a pattern that we need to be looking at as a governing body really for the establishment of policy and procedure and um, as it relates to Representative Shelton of Willingham and to Councilman Knight uh, to see if there are others or other items out there that, that perhaps um, would suggest either they've been single out or not. That's uh, that's my best attempt, that is. Is that what you meant, Councilman Baltrus, or? I would concur with that, yes, sir. All right. So I have a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? Lights on. Aye. Aye. So Councilman Daltridge voted for it. Everybody else opposed, correct? Correct. All right. Item number two, is there anything that we need to add or to uh, work through? Uh, Mayor, based on uh, the city manager and um, thank you, Representative Dalton, uh, the things uh, that we have looked at with the audit, um, I'd like to move to end the discussion on the audit and adopt the recommendation to all processes and procedures that we have already discussed uh, and published on concerning the audit. Okay. So I have a motion on the floor to accept the items that have been listed as they are with no new changes. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Walker. All in favor, please say, uh, any discussion? Yes, sir. Councilman. Uh, what I'm asking is the uh, the um, the process that our city manager just read up to us, the that and we have as with the audit. And if you need again, I would ask Mayor if you could have to read those again. Someone trying to help me with this. <laughs> I think I believe the motion on the floor, as I understand it, is to accept the plan of correction that we have drafted for the audit report that we received that we have submitted to the auditor's office as written with no uh, further changes and or comment. Is that a fair restatement? And so is there, is there a second? That's the second by Walker. Is there a need for discussion on that, uh, additional discussion? I think the problem is that their allegations that there was undue influence placed on some employee to cause them to deviate from that policy. Now, putting another policy in place won't change that. If there's somebody that, quote, places undue influence, undue pressure, okay? You know, if it is possible to have a, an individual council member's records released, if they approve, I have absolutely no problem with releasing my utility bills going back to 1986, which is as long as I've lived in Seabrook Mill. And my taxes have been paid because I own time before the end of the year because I don't pay interest, okay? And there's a uh, page in the newspaper published every year of anybody whose taxes are delinquent in either county. But we are in a dreadful place in our nation, state, and county. There is so much division afoot, and everybody looking for reason to divide us further. If you're a Christian, blessed be the peacemakers, and we need more peacemakers and few, fewer troublemakers. She fits wear it. So I have a comment to that comment. 
All right, Councilman Blackwell. Okay. Um, herein lies the issue with me is that it's so easy to cast stones when it's not being thrown at what your glass house is built of. And if we want to take movement or make movement towards healing our community, then that's everybody's job, not some people's job. And the allegations that were made specifically about Council Member Knight and myself and Rochelle Small Tony weren't just found in some random audit. They were crafted by organizations and networks broadly distributed to the public narratives were created Miss Wood's phone number and name were asked to be called and invoked and then we get a report that substantiates the narrative that had been played out in the public place on internet social media WHIG TV and the newspaper and to now think that everybody should be able to just suck it up and go home is a false narrative because individuals' characters and organizations have been attacked and smeared. And I'm good with the administrative findings and the response to those recommendations. What I'm not good with is someone coming into our community creating division by calling people and individuals corrupt behind allegations that cannot be fully substantiated. But that's not my call. But what I take objection to is that this body has always been able to work through division issues. We've always found ways to deal with what we don't agree on and move forward in policy without descending to name calling, calls for corrective action, and illegitimate concepts that have nothing to do with governance. So my whole point of view is that the auditor has given us her recommendations. We have responded to everything she stated with process and policy. We tried to respond in a manner that was respectful. And then attacks came. So if we want to have peace, let's do right and not just choose a vantage point about a utility bill. Let's make sure in our dialogue and discussions, our definition of ethics goes beyond personal issues related to business or related to how we pay a bill. And let's talk about how we create financial benefit for all citizens in Rocky Mount, wherever you live. Let's have a pledge for policies for downtown housing for everyone. Equitable jobs, promotions, regardless of your ethnicity, your background, or your orientation. Making sure people get paid right. Making sure contracts are available to everyone. Making sure we have a city that values all of our citizens on both sides of the tracks and not stealing from one part of town so another part of town can prosper. If you want peace from me, then let's have some justice. 
Thank you. Is there any additional discussion? One one comment, um, Mayor. Yes, um, Councilman Knight. I was saying no justice, no peace. I've been accused and alleged. And I just want to say I have served this community of Rocky Mountain without expectation of personal gain my entire life. I have never sought nor received special treatment or privilege. The city of Rocky Mount challenges the findings in the state audit's report, and I stand with the city. Our auditor asks us for process, improvements, and recommendation. Process, improvements, and recommendation. And that's what we have done. As far as I'm concerned, that the audit has been completed and the audit is done. We need to move forward with our economic development. We need to move forward with our housing bond. We need to move forward with our downtown development. We need to move forward with equity, prosperity for all of our employees. So again, I support the city in our recommendation. Thank you. I have a motion on the floor. It's been seconded. Is there a Mr. Mayor, I, Council I'd Rogers. like to respond, please. Um, we don't have anything written out, but listening, and I think the, I think it sounds really good. Um, and we and we ask for unity, and we ask for for people to to treat others correctly and right like we're taught to do. But I have said in this room on multiple occasions, when people come in this room, and if, if they go against certain people, they are attacked. That's not leadership. That's intimidation. I've been intimidated. Why did I run? I ran for city council because I didn't like the tone or what was going on. And I'm not gonna sit here and allow people to say that others don't care about people and if you disagree you don't care about others if you don't support certain policies then you don't care about the rest of Rocky Mountain well I disagree with that you can go to YouTube you can go to various places and see examples of where people have been attacked so if you truly mean what you say then live by it practice it thank you okay i'm responding to that because oh, can't... Oh, oh please can, can we can we call for a though yeah yeah we can <laughs> so what you can do is tune in to facebook live later on today and get my rebuttal no justice no peace call for the question all right is there i've got a motion on the floor it's been seconded is that all in favor please say aye aye all opposed like sign Councilman Dawson's post, and also W. B. Bullock, Councilman Bullock. Okay, that being it, that's uh, the last item on my agenda. Is there any other business that we need to discuss in this special session? I literally hope that moving forward as a city council, that we would show our city how we can work through our differences without blaming, shaming killing each other and that we can hope that they will take our example and unite and really make this city what we know it can be with all the opportunities coming here and let me just thank everyone uh, as we have processed through this hope that we leave here going forward thank you thank you councilman miller Councilwoman Miller. With regard to voting no on adopting these correct plan of correction, that is something that the state auditor requested. So if for those people that are voting no to that, what is the alternative? What plan do you have to respond to? How do you respond to the state auditor if you're voting no? And I understand that that vote didn't carry the day, but and vote of no says we got to come up with a different response. 
So what would you advocate that response be? Well, we, we have a motion that was passed and, and the response is as written is what carries the day. So I, I think we've discussed that particular business, but I, I appreciate your perspective. Yes, sir. Councilman Walker. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just to Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Miller's point, um, were you speaking to the actual recommendations that we have already given from the city? Or were you? Yes, the recommendations that the city manager out. Okay. So we have responded as the city. Yes. I was trying to, to, I guess, get clarity from Councilwoman Miller. That's Excuse me, all I was saying was that there were two votes as I heard it not to accept that plan and uh, support that response to the state auditor. So those people who would vote not to do that, there's still a response required. Now I know that the majority has voted to go forward with that response and that does carry. All I'm saying is it, it's a rhetorical question. For those people voting no, then they would have to have to be an alternative plan, right? An alternative response. I don't, I don't think so. Is there no is no and yay is yay. All right, uh, that being said, do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Moved by Second. Penn Joyner, seconded by Mike, I believe it was. All in favor say aye. Oh. Can, I, can I just say one thing? I don't want to put on your meeting. All right, well, let's just go ahead. Okay, sir. <laughs> Councilman Walker. But I, I just want to kind of piggyback on the sentiments of Councilman uh, Joyner's responses. I think um, as elected officials and leaders now of the current day, the current status of Rocky Mountain, uh, the weight is on our back to move forward in a way um, that we do not represent anything of the past, that we do not represent anything of uh, a division or any type of divisiveness between uh, the seven of us as a council. I think we set the stage as far as being leaders and elected officials, and we set the stage as to how the city can then be able to move forward. I believe a lot of, a lot of the division has come from uh, the division that's been on the council. And if we can unite as a, as a body and as a governing body, I think the city will, will fall suit and we'll be able to see that regardless of what we do not uh, believe in together. As Councilman Daltrey made a point earlier. There may be some things that we all may disagree with, but I think one thing we all can agree with is that if we are to be able to keep in mind that we are in politics not for power, but we are in politics for people, I think we'll be able to move forward in a way that will move our city forward and unite us uh, as we all seem to, to have the same sentiments of wanting to unite. But we need to determine what does that uniting and what does uh, coming together look like for us. Because I think we're, we're speaking some different languages and we're not necessarily showing and revealing to the public what unity can look like because we're not showing it. I think even in our differences, we still as a body have to be united. Thank you very much. The meeting is now adjourned. Vote, as we vote, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, like aye. Uh, all opposed, like sign. Okay.